All right, that was Rudy Giuliani, President Trump's newest lawyer, laying out more details of the strategy he thinks will best serve the president. President Trump tweeting this just moments ago. The Russia witch hunt is rapidly losing credibility. The House Intelligence Committee found no collusion, coordination, or anything else with Russia. So now the probe says, OK, what else is there? How about obstruction for a made-up phony crime? There is no O. It's called fighting back. Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Jim Himes of Connecticut. He's a member of the House Intelligence Committee, the aforementioned House Intelligence Committee. And I'll get to what the president's tweet was in a minute. But first, let's talk about Rudy Giuliani. So when he says the president doesn't have to comply with the subpoena, is that right? Uh, no, that's completely wrong. And, and I mean, as a matter of law, this, is, uh, this has never been tested, but it's also not in question. I mean, Nixon was forced to produce the tapes by a court. And of course, Bill Clinton, uh, in, in the litigation surrounding his case, uh, was, was compelled to participate in a civil, not a criminal, but a civil case. So no, the idea that the president would have to, uh, could be subpoenaed is not open to question. Now, he could plead the fifth. That's a totally different... And in fact, Rudy Giuliani seemed to suggest that that is something that the president would do. Well, and it's I mean, it's a remarkable thing, right? I mean, first of all, just on on its own, you know, the way Trump has talked about pleading the fifth. Remember when the Clinton staffers pleaded the fifth around the whole email thing? He said only the mob pleads the fifth. If you're guilty, why? You know, it's it's not true that you uh, that you're guilty if you plead the fifth. But of course, he mocked people for taking the fifth. And look, as a as an elected official, if I got myself in trouble and my recourse was to uh, plead the fifth. That is saying I won't be transparent with my constituents, and the president of the United States would be saying I'm not going to be transparent. Well, I mean, what they say there, what they're, I mean, you heard Rudy Giuliani. I'm not going to send him into a perjury trap because basically he thinks that Robert Mueller's investigators are trying to trap the president, and he's not going to let his client do that. They're not trying to trap the president. Uh, they are conducting an investigation just as Bill Clinton was investigated, just as Richard Nixon was uh, investigated. It's important to the president's people and his people in Congress who I serve with to make it sound like Mueller is biased. Um, but look, I, I, have, I have all the sympathy in the world for Rudy Giuliani and, uh, and the president's lawyers because the president is incapable of telling the truth on these matters. Uh, look, he just on Twitter this morning, you read the tweet, admitted to obstruction, right? Fighting back, there is a legal word for fighting back against uh, an investigation, and that's called obstruction. So, you know, look, of course his lawyers are going to do everything they can to prevent him uh, from doing what he does every single day, which is lying. When you lie to an investigator, that's, that's called perjury. I want to get to that tweet for a second because it does bring up your committee. The Russia witch hunt is rapidly losing credibility. The House Intelligence Committee found no collusion, coordination, or anything else with Russia. So let's just stop there. Is that a fact? No, it's not a fact. I, I'm on that committee. I will tell you that the Republican uh, report, which was produced without any Democratic support, which was cut short well before we interviewed any number of witnesses that were essential, well before we pushed back on huge claims of executive privilege by Hope Hicks, by Steve Bannon, by Corey Lewandowski, uh, was a sham. That report was a sham. You just need to read it to know, uh, you know, kind of how shoddy that work was. Look, that doesn't matter. Water under the bridge. What matters is that Mueller, who has far more, uh, you know, resources than either of the congressional investigative committees, he's doing his work and he needs to be allowed to finish that. But work. what if the president does ignore the subpoena or whatever the right verb is for how to not comply with the subpoena? And then what if he does plead the fifth? Then where is he left? I mean, what does that do for Mueller's investigation? How, how does the public ever find out? Well, the, 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 again, the president can't ignore a subpoena. The, the president and the, the law is not ambiguous here. The president needs to, to cooperate with an investigation. But the president, like every other American, who has to comply with a subpoena can also plead the fifth. And, you know, there's testimonial privileges that will protect the president if he chooses. Now, that's a huge political issue for him, uh, just as it would be for any elected official who chose not to be transparent about his activities. And remember, this is a president who says, I've got nothing to hide, so why would he plead the fifth? I mean, it does sound like it's still an open question, according to the Supreme Court, about whether or not a sitting U.S. president does have to comply or cooperate or to what level? To well, what it's not an open question about whether the president would have to cooperate or could be asked by a court to cooperate. No citizen in this country is above the law. And again, Nixon had to produce the Watergate tapes, ultimately leading to articles of impeachment. Clinton had to testify uh, in a civil case, which of course is, is arguably less serious than a criminal case. The president could plead the fifth. That would be his recourse. That's where Rudy Giuliani went. But again, the American public need to look back at what the president said about people who take the fifth. Okay, the chair of your committee, Devin Nunes, wants to um, hold the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, in contempt of Congress. Let me play for you what he said about this threat. Two weeks ago, 
uh, we sent a letter to Attorney General Jeff Sessions, a classified letter. Mm. Uh, it, per usual, it was ignored, uh, not acknowledged, just completely ignored. So last week we sent a subpoena, and then on mm. Thursday we discovered that uh, they are not going to comply with our subpoena. So what are you going to do about it? Very important information that we need. So what are you going to do? The only thing left that we can do is we have to move quickly to hold the Attorney General of the United States in contempt. And that's what I'm going to press for this week. What's your reaction? Uh, you know, it's just beyond crazy. So let's review the facts that Devin uh, obscured there. Uh, in his campaign, and there's a number of Republicans, four or five of them, who are out there solely to discredit the Justice Department and the FBI, uh, they have demanded production of documents, the Comey Memorandum, which the Department of Justice produced. What is known as the EC, the reason for the establishment, the original reason for the establishment of the investigation, the Department of Justice produced. The FISA affidavits authorizing the wiretapping of, of some individuals, the Department of Justice produced. All of those things were breaking with Department of Justice precedent that says they don't provide documents in ongoing So what hasn't Devin Nunes got that he wants? What Devin Nunes hasn't fully done is completely discredited the Mueller uh, investigation. That's why you run to the White House a year ago and then say you're going to brief the president on information you got from the White House. That's why you defend Michael Flynn. That's why you issue a House report uh, critical of the uh, Mueller investigation well before your committee has finished uh, its investigation. Make no mistake, this is about discrediting but, Mueller and the but DOJ. But do you think he's really going to hold Jeff Sessions in contempt of Congress? Uh, that's not going to happen, right? That would require a, a vote of two-thirds of the Senate. Um, look, even Devin's Republican colleagues Talk to my friend Trey Gowdy, who has been, you know, has spoken in defense of this investigation and of the FBI and the Department of Justice. Even Devin's Republicans colleagues are getting tired of this game. Carson, Jim Himes, great to have you here. Thanks Thank so you, much Allison. for being here. Chris. Right, add this to the mix. A federal judge slamming prosecutors in special counsel Mueller's probe, saying they're using Paul Manafort's tax and bank fraud case to get to the president. Has Mueller exceeded his authority? How about a debate on a Monday morning? How nice. I'm Chris Cuomo. Friends, let's get after it. Forget about the spin. This is about how we got here. Sarah Sanders joining us, Joe Biden, Senator Ted Cruz. Why was that ever on the table? I understand why you don't like the question. He's cleaning your clock.